welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today we're talking about the top 10 shocking facts about birth. Now, before we get into this video, if you know the answer to this, do let me know how much you weighed when you were born. This is something my mum likes to proudly tell me. I was seven pounds and three ounces. Baby Rebecca. If you like this kind of video, then make sure you do leave a thumbs up and share it with a friend that needs to know some facts about births today. Also, check out our description box where there are links to our most amazing social medias. So, one day I do want to have kids, but I don't want to have any right now. Before we launch into this video, I want to talk about birth control and our video sponsor, Simple Health. Simple Health makes the process of getting birth control much easier and much more discreet, if that's what you're looking for. Simple Health puts you in charge of your birth control and removes the need to go to a doctor or pharmacy, so no more scheduling appointments weeks in advance. All you have to do is fill out an online health profile and answer some simple questions, which a doctor will then review. Then you will be recommended a product and be given a prescription, which is sent to you in the post in unmarked packaging. If you have insurance, Simple Health is free with most plans, and if you don't have insurance, it's just $15 a month, and delivery is free for everyone. We are giving you all a chance to try Simple Health for free with my code by going to simplehealth.com forward slash most amazing, or just enter most amazing at the checkout. All right, shocking facts about birth. I'm scared. Coming in at number 10, we have five years, seven months, 21 days. Now, that was the age of the youngest mother in history. Honestly, five years old, that is so shocking. It's really, really, honestly, and truly extremely messed up. Linda Marcella Medina de Giuro gave birth in the late 1930s, age five, and she didn't marry until the 1970s when she was in her late 30s. She had a second kid in 1972, putting her kids 33 years apart. Obviously having a baby at five, she was abused, she never revealed the identity of the child's father. Many suspected that it was her own father, but he was never convicted. Linda is still alive, but her first child, Gerardo, sadly died at age 40. Coming into number nine, we have the reason we're so weak. Danny Burke actually told me this one at the weekend, and it was really, really interesting. Have you ever noticed how some animals come into the world way more self-sufficient than others? Like deer get up and start running around a day later. A lot of newborns can almost fend for themselves, but us humans are stuck there like, Wah. Hold me. This is actually all down to evolution. The trade off for being able to walk on two legs is having to be born pretty weak. Pelvises are about as wide as they can be to allow walking and also giving birth. Humans can't gestate any longer than nine months, as if they do, babies are born far too big to birth them naturally. Also, the attachment babies have to their parents means that they have ample time to learn from them, another reason why we're more intelligent than other animals. A shocking fact coming into number eight, we have the UK versus Africa. Do you ever wonder what it's like to bring a baby into the world in one of the poorest nations versus one of the richest with the best universal free healthcare? Well, it seems in Africa, one out of every 22 women dies whilst giving birth or while she's pregnant. In the United Kingdom, this statistic is only one out of every 8,000 women. Can you even imagine the comparison between those two? I absolutely cannot believe those statistics. For every birth in Africa, there's a one in 22 chance that the woman will die. Seriously, the NHS in the UK is such an absolute blessing and we should protect it at all costs. The statistics speak for themselves. Coming into number seven, we have the birth rate. Alarmingly, it took over 200,000 years of humanity's history for the world's population to reach one billion, and then over 200 years more to reach seven billion. In my life, the population of the world has boomed by over two billion. There are 135 million babies born every year, but just 56 million deaths. Experts think that the birth rate has peaked, and moving forward, the death rate will increase, whilst the birth rate will decline slightly, so we're probably not going to hit 10 billion too quickly, but still, we populated. All right, this is a big one. Coming into number six, we have getting kicked in the testicles versus childbirth. It's an age-old question. So does childbirth hurt more than being kicked in the testicles? It's complicated, but the answer factoring in the duration of childbirth seems to point to yes, childbirth probably is more painful. The story goes that testicles are organs that live outside of the body. They are very sensitive and they're covered in nociceptors. They're like super nerves. Testicles are also attached to nerves in the stomach, which makes a person feel sick, so not great. Females also have these nociceptors too, and they have to push babies' heads out of comparatively small pelvises, and they can tear themselves in doing so. This also goes on for an average of eight hours. Now, there is no accurate universal measure of pain, as it's subjective to the person experiencing it, so we can't definitively answer this question, but the duration of a person in 
labour feels pain much longer than a person who's had a blow to the testicles. Although both hurt, it's not a contest. Pain. Pain is pain. Coming into number five, we have the placenta as a superfood. So you may be aware that some women eat their placentas. The idea comes from the animal kingdom where it is commonplace for afterbirths to be eaten. The placenta is rich in nutrients and for generations has been studied for its health benefits. In ancient Chinese medicine, the placenta would be eaten to help treat infertility and liver issues. These days, placentas can be made into pills and taken as a daily supplement, but others choose to eat theirs raw or cook with them. Blech. There are recipes out there for placenta lasagna or placenta spaghetti. Honestly, carbs and placenta turn my stomach a bit, but honestly, like you should do whatever you want, but I'm not having any of the lasagna. Thanks. Coming in at number four, we have bury it. In a lot of First Nations cultures, including Navajo and New Zealand's Maori, burying placentas after childbirth is commonplace. Some bury it on the day of the child's birth, while others wait up to a week. Often the burial is part of a wider ritual and often this is also included as part of a planting of a tree ceremony. The reason varies from culture to culture, but generally the unifying factor is to give thanks for the baby and return the nutrients to the earth. After all, we're off the earth. Often if a person moves home, they'll take some of the soil from them from the area they buried the placenta in. Hospitals do tend to hold on to placentas for a few days for pathological reasons. After that though, they incinerate them. Oh, this sounds like something I really don't want. Coming in at number three, we have the 75 day labor. Meet the woman who holds the record for the longest labor. This is Joanna Krystanek. She's a 31 year old Polish national and she went into labour at 21 weeks. Sadly, she lost one of her three babies, it was born prematurely. It seemed likely that she would lose the other babies, so doctors delayed her labour by giving her medication to stop her contractions. She then had to lay upside down for 24 hours a day for two and a half months to help her babies finish developing. The 75 days of labour are thought to be the longest ever suffered by a woman and she was upside down. Joanna was over the moon when her other two babies, a boy and a girl were born healthy. She said, I want to express my gratitude for the staff of the hospital for their wisdom and helpfulness. I would never have been able to get through this without them. Yep. Thank goodness for modern medicine. Coming into number two, we have the 22 pound baby. Ah -ha -ha. The heaviest baby born and officially recorded was 22 pounds, which is basically 10 kilos and nearly two stone. Big baby. The baby boy was born to a seven foot, 11 inch giantess, Anna Bates, in 1879. The father was Martin Van Bruyn who was seven foot nine, and the pair travelled in a show, billing themselves as the tallest couple in the world. When Anna's waters broke, she lost over 22 litres of fluid. The baby was born the size of a six month old and was 28 inches tall. Really sadly though, the boy died shortly after childbirth. In 1982, a 22 pound and eight ounce baby was born to Christina Semain, but for some reason she doesn't get to be in the Guinness World Record books because her child had a birth defect. Honestly, the size of these babies really puts me off. Finally coming into number one, we have the craziest story you're gonna hear today, but like actually though, we have the miracle baby. A woman had a baby on the toilet of a moving train in India. If that wasn't crazy enough, in India they don't go for a flushing train loo, they're more about dumping that waste directly onto the train tracks. So where did the baby go? Um, out of the hole. The mother fainted after giving birth to the baby boy and wasn't found until the train reached the end destination. The baby baby fell onto the train tracks. Luckily the baby was later found on the tracks alive. He didn't even have any serious injuries. He was a bit underweight though. What a start to life and what a miracle. So guys, that was the top 10 shocking facts about birth. Which did you find to be the most shocking? I imagine some of you watching have had kids, although most of you watching probably don't. Either way, I do hope that you learned something from this video. Again, thank you to our video sponsor, Simple Health. If you want to take control of your birth control, then do check out our promotional link in the description box. Also, don't forget to leave me a comment letting me know what you weighed when you were born if you know. If not, ask your mum, they might know. Before I get out of here, I'm just gonna read some comments from one of my most recent videos, the top 10 scary deep space stories. Our Crazy Wolf YouTube was paying homage to the Mars rover. They said, RAP opportunity, you really were one of humanity's greatest opportunities. Right? Danny Burke bought me a cactus recently and I called it opportunity after the rover. Gotta keep the memory strong. Now I needed one called Spirit and they can live together on my windowsill. Josie said, I saw some NASA footage years ago that featured a somewhat translucent and pastel colour changing snake that tumbled and withered around outside one of the shutters. It appeared organic and was absolutely fascinating. In the years since, I've been unable to find that footage again to my regret. It was mesmerising and deeply weird. 
Honestly, I feel you there. Space snakes, real or not real, urban legend or fact. We may never know, but like, I for one believe in a space snake, cause why not? Thank you guys for watching this video. Once again, do leave a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. Stick around for more most amazing videos, and I'll see you soon. Bye!